Today, I wanted to announce that Initialized Capital, my VC firm, just led a $10 million investment into Career Karma. They built a fast-growing, profitable startup, helping people find the best coding boot camps or universities for their situation. People from all walks of life, some who have never even been to college, have joined Career Karma squads, met people like them who were successful through that process, and they found the ideal school for them. Many go on to six-figure jobs in tech. And it takes a community. That was my experience at Y Combinator, as a partner and as an investor. You can go a lot farther if you go together with a community of people who can help you. That community approach at YC spawned over $150 billion worth of new startups that might not have happened otherwise. And that was from a community of just thousands of founders. Career Karma is bringing that approach to something that 55 million Americans and a billion people worldwide could use. Reskilling through software, through community, is how we can build a better society. And coding is just the beginning. Let's get started. Ruben, it's uh, just, I mean, so awesome to finally be working with you in an official capacity. You know, today we're announcing that we uh, in invested in your latest round and we've known each other for a long time, actually, before even, I think, Career Karma was a uh, fully baked idea. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Grateful to, to have you all believe in us from the beginning. I remember the, the first meeting we had at Coffee Bar in San Francisco during the breaking of the startups days. We were just running the podcast and you gave us advice that, that led to where we are today. To someone who hasn't heard of Career Karma yet, like what is it? Career Karma is the easiest way to find a job training program online. So it's a marketplace. And what we do is we match workers to job training programs so they can find high paying jobs in a short amount of time, usually three to 12 months. Uh, we started with technical jobs, a focus on software engineering, but now we offer six different career paths and, and roles like sales and design and data science and things like that. Um, but what makes us unique is not only will we match you to a job training program, we'll give you support during the program, during the job search and for the rest of your life. So it's worked out very well. We started with boot camps, and now that COVID-19 has accelerated a lot of these trends that we've talked about related to automation. You're starting to see every education player getting in the game, like trade schools, colleges, and universities. And so as Career Karma continues to grow and other education players start copying the model, then Career Karma will be able to expand and, and serve people across job training programs and eventually help them not just get their first job, but support them for the rest of their career. Some of the most powerful things about it actually are coming from the stories that your community members and sort of people who have seen success through the program, those stories are really impressive because it's really all walks of life coming into tech, sort of piggybacking on some of the stuff that you've been doing for a while with your breaking into startups podcast and outreach and just teaching. But now it's community. On the other end of coming into a website learning a lot and then meeting other people who can sort of grow with you people getting six-figure jobs basically in tech building software at the best companies in silicon valley and like everywhere in in the country in the world for us content has always been king storytelling has always been the name of the game and um, when we first broke into tech we wrote a story called breaking into startups that blew up and even before that I got into investment banking through Breaking Into Wall Street. There was a program called Breaking Into Wall Street. We created a podcast and then got into YouTube, just like how you all are doing YouTube. And it seems every company these days is is looking for, for guidance. And so a lot of career companies and those users just came through people that were inspired from the successful stories from everyday people that figured out how to break the tech. And then once we realized that it wasn't enough to share stories and point people to teaching programs because this was psychological, uh, we needed to create that community aspect to create that wraparound support system, upskill and reskill people in short amounts of time. Years ago, when a lot of the stuff first started, I think people were resistant. They're like, don't you need to go to a four-year college and get a computer science degree? And you need to go get the stamp on the forehead. It's actually an interesting contrast to today, where what is NASDAQ at today look at market cap of every tech company is in the trillions, right? The top five most valued companies in the world 
uh, at least in the US. Yeah, those are all tech companies, but in the world too, they're all tech companies. Society is going to be eaten by software. On the flip side, how do you speed that up? And so there's incredible demand for people who can just drop in and write software or build technology that actually the world needs right now. If you're a tech company that doesn't have tech, but is making hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, what the market is saying now is that money is going to go away. That's directly related to what's happening in the workforce. I think that that's like an incredible opportunity, actually, that you and I spend a lot of time talking about income inequality uh, in the past. Like, I remember that was one of the first things we talked about at Coffee Bar. And for me, I didn't grow up well off. I was lucky to grow up in the Bay Area. I grew up in apartments and my mom was a nurse assistant. My dad worked at a machine shop. We didn't have a lot. But then computers sort of made everything happen for me. Got my first job by like cold calling the yellow pages. And then that helped pay for the down payment for the first home that my parents bought that they still live in now. And so tech gave me everything. It like made me in my career. And then now how do we actually bring that to the world? That's the kernel of what I think is super powerful about what you're doing and what you've built. Yeah. I mean, like when you think about income inequality and just where we are today, people are talking about this K-State recovery. Over 55 million Americans that have filed for unemployment, 54% of the workforce requiring a reskilling by 2022. So to your point, you know, the market has re rebounded since the, since the um, pandemic hit in March. You know, there's vaccine, the election happened. Jobs are pretty much almost back for people in white collar jobs, but the people that lost their jobs, many of them are actually losing them permanently. They have no idea what to do next. But to your point, it is actually a massive opportunity because there are jobs out there and there's lots of funding that's out there. There's a lot of new companies being created, but the people that want to get those jobs need to be exposed to those opportunities. They need to know what skills are required and the people that can help them not just get the skills and the credentials, but also the referrals into those jobs. Most of these jobs are offline and come through referral. A lot of times you have to see other people that are with you to get those introductions, very similar to how you get introductions to VCs. And so creating something that helps you with all that is important. The other thing that this pandemic has really emphasized, in my opinion, is um, the focus on, on parents. Most of the people that we serve are, are adults, so between 25 and 35 years old. They're a little bit older than that as well, sometimes a little bit straight out of high school. But you know, there's, there's over 105 million adults or two thirds of Americans without a college degree. But now that we've been quarantined, you actually see you know, over a million women leaving the workforce in September alone, for example, because they have to take care of the kids that are at home. So how do we not just point them to short form programs, but also programs that are part time? Unemployment benefits ran out. How do you find the programs that have living stipends, like a thankful, that'll give you $1,500 a month, or App Academy with Climb Credit, that'll give you something to help you out while you're going through it. There's a lot of needs that people need outside of financial, short form, rele relevant to their skill set. But if you can have these different things that, if you have a program, a platform that consolidates all these different resources that are being presented to people, it's a big deal. And one of the shining examples of somebody's people that are thriving during the pandemic is e-commerce. When you think about education, after the school shuts down, you know, 1.5 billion learners had to go online. And so now online education shouldn't be separate from education. It's just education, period. And so that also accelerates issues related to the digital divide with a laptop and Wi-Fi and things like that. But also, there's no reason why you can't get a six-figure job in a short amount of time if you just decide and you have access to a laptop if you are pointed in the right direction and you have the right guidance to get to where you want to go. And, and that's so, what uh, career karma is. It's, it's the guidance, it's the community. The really cool thing that I am really impressed by, not only is it the thing that society really needs and wants, but you've also figured out a way to monetize in a way that is an amazing business too. That's where capitalism works really well. If you make something people want, and then you have a way to basically make it a virtuous cycle. We're like really far along on increasing the sort of footprint and number of people we can reach. To me, that's product market fit. I'm like really excited about that because it's one thing to like 
talk about it. And we talked about it for a long time in the past. People are still talking about it. Digital divide and income inequality. What I love about career karma is you're doing something about it. How many people have been through the platform? And these are people who come out with six-figure jobs on the end, you know? They're actually becoming a part of tech and they're not from central casting. Yeah. Speaking of the money, you talked about trillion dollars. The United States alone spends over a trillion dollars a year on workforce development. It's not like there's lack of investment going into that, but you're still seeing these issues. The global education industry is like a $7 trillion market. But the problem with that is education is a commodity, right? So you, you can't really create a monopoly in education because you're not going to create one school that educates the world. So what a lot of people don't realize is that colleges spend over $10 billion a year fighting for enrollments. Trade schools are fighting for enrollments. Boot camps are fighting for enrollments because there's so many different schools that are out here trying to fight for these people that are in there. What we did is understand what is the need for both sides of the market. We talked about one side, but a need for the other side of the market is finding qualified applicants that are serious about starting and finishing the programs, especially now that there's a huge emphasis on what's the ROI of going to school. Am I getting a job? So if a school is going to serve you, you want to have people that are going to start and finish the program. They want help with retention. They want help with the job search. Most schools are really good at education, but they need a lot of help with the admission side of things, the job search side of things, and the retention side of things. Um, they're really good at alumni engagement when it comes to philanthropy and raising money for the, for the schools. But when it comes to everything else, there's a lot of work to do. So that's what we feel the need in, in that regard. I think Peter Thiel likes to talk about how Harvard or Stanford, they're basically like Studio 54. They basically put up the line and the acceptance rate is super low. But as you say, what someone in that program who pays 60 or 80 or 100 grand a year to go to, it's like not that different copying in a Zoom. And then these other things, especially when you add ISAs, they're learning, they get a six figure job on the other end and they're not paying for it, actually. They're not paying up front for it anyway. They get something before they give. Rather than have people waiting in line, basically not ever getting to a career that they want and should have, why not just let them all in? And then part of it is targeting. There's no one size fits all. You know, what you would experience at Flatiron School is very different than what you might experience at another place. And you can sort of hyper-target. You can meet people from one's existing community. You can find people who are like you. And then that allows you to make a far more informed decision. That's exactly right. I mean, I think to your point, a lot of people's decisions is not even just economic or schedule or time or skill. Are there other moms from Atlanta that are in this program or other veterans like me that are in this program that are also Falcons fans or Fish fans or whatever that we can connect with? Because again, the psychological game and a lot of people will, will do everything possible. There's really intelligent people that will cite themselves out because they're 50 years old. What's funny is uh, this mirrors what I saw with Y Combinator, honestly. I wanted to start a company, but I probably didn't have the culture, the community, and even like the language to say the things I needed to say to start a business. And I remember Paul Graham's essays oh, gave me the belief in myself and actually the recognition that, oh, those founders that I would read about in the Wall Street Journal they're not that different than me, actually. In order to actually empower people, you have to make them realize not that these people are on pedestals and you could never do it, but actually they are far more like you than you could possibly think. We're all just human beings, right? That's where the community piece is super powerful. And then that's what enabled me to like get out of my corporate job working for Microsoft or even like working for someone else's startup and like get me all the way to becoming a founder. Yeah, essentially what we're build, building is very similar to like what you said related to being kind of like white combinator for the people and just people underestimate what the importance of believing in somebody is. And for a lot of these roles that are being created, most people on the outside don't even know what that is. The way we even discovered white combinator was during our time in investment banking. Uh, one of our buddies quit his job to become a software engineer. And he went to Flatiron School and he was in the same cohort as Jack Altman, which is Sam Altman's brother, who now runs Lattice and is now an angel of career karma. But we discovered boot camps and Y Combinator just through an example of seeing one of our friends doing this. And we were like, wow, you can get a six figure job in three months. How come nobody else knows about this? And we, what would happen if you like made this more public? And what we realized is that people were going to school to school to school and company to company to company. And so as we started discovering, thinking about this network piece of things, if people aren't going to just one school and one company forever, 
they don't just need the examples, the people that have done it before, they need that, that peer cohort, that network of people, because part of the value of Y Combinator is not just the advice that you're getting, but being in a batch with other people that are pushing themselves at high levels. So it doesn't feel abnormal, right? You have to be in this batch. And then the VCs, we kind of see kind of like boot camps, right? Because you're going to raise from somebody during your seed run, and then you're going to work for a little bit, and then you're going to raise for your, your Series A, and then your Series B. And so you might go to one school, and then you're going to go to another school, or one company, and then another company, but you need that network and that throughput throughout. And so that's what the career come up piece is, that wraparound support system that's going to be with you forever. Did you have Airbnb come to speak during yeah, your batch? Yeah, I did. I so did. that's the powerful moment. It's like you're sitting it's in a room full powerful. of other founders, and Brian Chesky comes in, running the $30 billion company, and he's like, in 2009, I was sitting in your seat and still had credit card debt, you know, mm -hmm. still exactly. was trying to build a thing from nothing. Those group dinners with Brian and the co-founders of Stripe, the founder of Front, founders of Rappi, the biggest thing that jumped out to me every time I heard those stories was, wow, they're not that much different than me. They can do this. I know I can do this. And it's not a comparison type of thing. We're family. We got chosen for a reason. We're all here. Everything is possible. You're surrounded by the right guys. You have the right resources. All those things that you thought were perceived disadvantages are actually advantages. And those talks helped us realize who we really were. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's earlier you said it. Why Combinator for everyone? Why see change my life, change our lives? What if you could bring it to a billion people? Exactly. Going back to the peer groups, you have the group talks, you have the peers that you're working with. But YC also does something very special with the smaller groups, the smaller batches, like they break down the batches. And so we, we have a similar concept in Career Combo called a squad. So a lot of times when people are looking for mentors, they look for people that are already doing the thing for years. So Brian Chesky. But Brian Chesky, even though he's inspiring to me, he may not be as relevant to me as someone that just raised their seed round if I just got into Y Combinator. We put you into a group of people that are at your level and one step above you. And the only thing that we ask is if you get put into that squad, that you help somebody behind you. So as you continue leveling up and going through these different cohorts, you have a nice ladder of people helping people forever. And that's why it's called Career Karma. You, you give time to get time. Yeah. I wanted to zoom out a little bit and just hear more about your breaking into tech story, right? Leaving Atlanta, moving to San Francisco. What you saw is a unique version of you know, what every, everyone else in the world is sort of seeing. You saw a piece of it that you could solve. I went to small religious schools my whole life. When I graduated, the thing wasn't breaking into tech. It was becoming an investment banker or consultant. I've been playing the cello for almost 30 years. I was a double major business administration in music. So my whole thing was becoming a professional musician. But my cello teacher told me, rather than fighting it out as a musician, focus on getting to the business because most artists have to learn the business anyway, but they don't realize that because they're focused on the purity of the art. Naturally, as a classical musician, you meet business people and they told you, if you want to learn business a short amount of time, do investment banking. The problem is, is, Nobody from my school was an investment banker, so I had to find people that look like me that can help me get there. And so I discovered a blog called Merging and Inquisitions and that online course called Breaking into Wall Street. I sent out 90 cutting emails. 300 of them were to a diversity and inclusion group called Sponsors for Education Opportunity, SEO, and MLT, Management Leadership for Tomorrow. But I, I didn't qualify because I graduated college already. But long story short, what they did is they allowed me to set up a booth at Morehouse College. And after crashing their career fairs, I pitched myself to BMO Capital Markets and I got a job as an investment banker in Chicago. After two years, I got recruited to Atlanta where I met my first co-founder, Archer Meister, and his twin brother, Timor Meister, was an auto trader at the time, but none of us knew how to code. So I told you that story about how we discovered boot camps and Y Combinator. And what we learned from YC is that you have to make something people want, and you have to have people that write code and talk to users. So Archer and Timor decided to go to code and become, go to boot camps themselves. And I decided to be the CEO guy that talks to users and raises money. I bought a one-way ticket to San Francisco, had a place to live for a month. Three weeks later, I found a job at all school. I wrote a story about it called Breaking Into Startups. That blew up. And then the twins came out. We wrote another story. 
And that also blew up called The Reality of Breaking the Startups. And then that turned into a podcast. And so after running the podcast, the reason why we started the podcast is because we realized that the tech media normally only covers stories of VCs and CEOs, but there was nothing for everyday people breaking into tech. And if they did share a story of someone that broke into tech, it was someone from Stanford. And I'm not knocking Stanford. <laughs> Dude, I like went that. to Stanford and I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I love it was Stanford. like getting, it was like silver spoon, seriously. Yeah, and it's, it's a beautiful place. My cousin went to Stanford, but for most people, how does someone that never went to school relate to that? And so we created this podcast that had over 100 episodes and started really inspiring people and getting thousands of emails of people asking how they can meet the people that were on the show and how they can themselves break into tech. The other thing that was interesting is we had schools start reaching out to us wanting to pay money to get access to our audience. Um, I remember the first school that started paying us was paying us 5000 a month. We're like, wow, like, you can get paid 60000 a year for one of these schools to really do this. How many schools are there? Wow, there's 450 of them? Interesting. Do colleges do this? Do trade schools do this? So that's how we started really discovering that there was something there. And that's when everybody started talking about the future of work and remote work and, and workforce development. And over that whole time period, we didn't realize that we are not just positioning ourselves as thought leaders on the subject, but the best team in the world to really solve this problem. And so that's when Michael Sabo actually kept asking me about, so you ready to start a company yet? And I was like, yeah. He said, did you quit your job? I said, no. He's like, you're not ready. He said, let me know when you're ready. So finally I quit my job and we did it. And here we are. A part of it is like testimony because you lived it. You came in, you saw how hard it was. Now what you get to do is design a program and an experience that is like tailor-made to make your experience better. As you intimately understand how hard it was and what were the rough spots. And then now through software and community, it's like, let's just sand all of those down, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. To, to your point about helping a billion people, like we want to help people become better than we were, right? So it's like the ultimate sense of fulfillment. That's why we wake up every day so excited because we can help people not take the amount of time that it took us to get to where we are. We can give them those gems today so that they can help not just themselves, but the entire family. I know when we talked during the Series A pitch, you know, there was a lady, Keisha Lake. Keisha Lake, she, she came to us last year. She, um, she didn't know how to code. She didn't even know what code was. She tried to go to college for 10 years. She came in January. By November, she got a job making $98,500 at Stitch Fix remotely before COVID-19 was a thing. This year, she just bought a house. She just tweeted talking about how she got promoted. And she's invited 20 of her friends which the, with another one getting a job this year from a different boot camp at the same company. And so that goes back to that karmic effect. Once you start doing that, and now we've done this for 3,000 people at really cool companies, Gemini and Twitter and, and Tesla and, and other places like that, there's no better feeling than that. There's no better yeah. feeling than that. Think about the waves, the concentric circles of this sort of fanning out into people's communities. Once you know one person and then you got 20, and then you got 20 on top of that and 20 on top of that, career karma can make a real impact. I mean, the numbers are outrageous, right? It's like a hundred million people. That's how the exponential happens is you change someone's life so thoroughly and it can ripple out into all of society. I get goosebumps about it. That is so powerful. It's what transformed my life. It's what transformed your life. We're fishing for people here, you know? Exactly. Fishing for people. The mission that you are setting out to do is a really big one to touch a billion people in the next 10 years. What does it mean to you? Our mission is to connect the world to their next opportunity. And as I think about that, is the reason why is because people are embracing lifelong learning. They may not always want to switch jobs or careers, but they're always, they want to feel what they're doing matters. And it really goes down to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Once you've covered your base needs to take care of your family and, and be able to put food on the table and, all, and your health, you really want to figure out not just what you're good at, but what were you put on this earth to do. And a lot of times people see this as an individual type of thing, but it, it actually requires you to work with other people. I think building companies is a team sport. 
And something that we always talk about is the importance of not climbing the wrong hill and recognizing that you can't climb Everest alone. As we're connecting the world to these different opportunities, think about the people that you're carrying with you along the way and the impact that you're making. And I would say that's, that's our vision. Human potential is one of the biggest untapped resources of all time. And if you can help people believe in themselves and unlock that potential, the world is going to look very, very different. That's a big, meaningful mission. <laughs> so how can people get involved? And obviously, uh, Initialize just invested your post-product market fit. You're doing more than 3,000 job placements in a single year. You're putting up big numbers and you're just getting started. Career Karma is a great place to, to actually work right now because you need to scale the operations of the company itself. Who are you looking for and how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, thank you. I mean, so thanks to you for, for leading our, our $10 million Series A round. Uh, so we're looking to hire people in our product team, our engineering team, our marketing team and our operations teams right now. I'll say the top priorities are in product and engineering. Uh, we want people that want to help us create the core use case beyond just getting matched into a rescaling program. But the the next phase of maintaining the relationship with the worker after they're enrolled in a program all the way into employment and for the rest of their life. So if you're excited about helping people um, not just get the skills for a job, but also to find a job and, and find the regularly received career advice to increase their earnings potential forever, those are the types of people that we want to hire. Um, and we'll, we'll share the hiring link with you as well. Careerkarma.com slash jobs. There's a link in the description. Please check it out. What's sort of like your honey badger moment, a time that you had to be fierce or relentless and if there's a lesson for sort of the 20 year old version of yourself what did you learn from that moment so the biggest thing that i think about as far as being fierce or relentless on this type of a journey entrepreneurial journey is just something that my buddy deshaun told me he's the ceo of maven he told me that um that no's turn to yeses on this journey you're going to get a lot of no's but you don't always have to take that personal because um, if you're doing your best and it doesn't work out, it wasn't meant to be or wasn't the right time. And I have many examples of this. Y Combinator, we got rejected the first time, right? Even though we knew everybody there. So it's not about relationships, it's always. What are you doing? Like, have you launched all these things? Or how are you communicating? But that was the right decision. I'm so glad that they rejected us the first time because we weren't ready. And what you got to do is just keep going because it eventually turned into a yes in that same year. Same type of thing. There's a lot of people that we talked to that wanted to invest money that didn't invest at a certain time and invested later at a much larger amount, right? So always remember that no's turn to yeses and trust yourself as you're going through this process and listen to the feedback because sometimes they're going to give you feedback that you're going to need to carry with you to the next step. It's one thing if you're not doing your best, if you're not doing your best, then you got to work on on iterating there. But if you did your best and it doesn't work out, just think about it more like a timing thing. So that's always helped me when it comes to being a, a honey badger. And then I would also say, have a mindset of abundance. The path is there. You just got to stay low and keep firing. You have to just have the sales mindset where there's always somebody else that you could add into your pipeline and you will not run out of options. And what's important is to keep that thing full because eventually you're going to hit pay dirt and you're going to have as much honey as you can fathom. To eat. Abundance mindset, growth mindset. Ruben, you are working on the thing that I think is the most growth mindset thing that I have ever seen in my entire life, maybe ever will see. <laughs> You're helping people get to six figure jobs, change their lives, bring their whole families up, bring their whole friend groups up. Kind of like what YC did for both of us. It's happening a much larger scale for a problem that's a hundred X bigger, actually. So that's really, really cool. When I got into my first job, at BMO Capital Markets, the vice chair, he told me, you know, a lot of people in investment banking, all they care about is just making money, being masters of the universe. He said, but if you want to be a billionaire, you got to help a billion people. If you help people put food on the table, everything else comes. So our North Star is just really making sure that we're not just fishing for people, but we're, we're doing everything that we can to help them out with their best interests to get to where they want to go. I and mean, we're grateful to be aligned with people like yourself that have had that life-changing impact that are committed to doing it. And and we're excited for this next chapter. I'm psyched, man. Thanks for coming on the channel. We're going to hear a lot more from you over the coming weeks, months, and honestly, like years and decades, you know, there's no limit to human potential. And I am so psyched to be on this journey with you. Thank you, man.